singing a song as we go along, walking in the window in the land. Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here with Mr. J. Hello. And as part of the Christmas reviews, we're going to be reviewing Santa Slay. Santa Slay is, for what I'm reading, it's a comedy horror fantasy film. The film stars Bill Goldman, Douglas Smith, and Emily de Raven. So, Santa Slay is about Demon Santa Claus, or Satan Santa Claus, as I, sh as I should say. And it's all because of him losing a bet with, like, an angel. Yeah, he right? lost, yeah he made, they both made a bet, and the angel won. It's just about Demon Santa Claus killing people, and that's really the plot. So, with Santa Slay, uh, I'm gonna say this. Do I think it's a good movie? I don't think so, but was it a fun movie? Is it kind of a guilty pleasure? Yeah, honestly, I would say it is. I think this is, um, actually it's a little guilty, fun kind of film that knows what it is, I'll say that. It knows it's not trying to be like this Oscar contender or anything. Uh, the movie knows what it is and I do admire it for that at least. We have to talk about Bill Goldberg as Santa as Claus as well. or Satan Santa Claus. If you guys actually switch the word Santa, it's Satan all that, which I thought was very clever. Um, but I actually thought he did a very good job as Demon Santa Claus. You could tell that Bill Goldberg, he was having a lot of fun <laughs> in this role. Um, he was definitely not your sunshiny and rainbow Santa <laughs> Claus. Uh, but you know, for the kind of role that he was delivered, I have to be honest, I actually had a lot of fun uh, with him playing this role so I actually really liked him. You, uh, you? Yeah I really liked being as a Satan Santa. He played like the perfect part for it. We also do have um, Douglas Smith who plays the character of Nicholas. Um, I actually thought he did a, a really good job. He's definitely like one of the better actors in this film to me because most of the performances while I wouldn't say they're necessarily bad um, I don't think they're like the best performances to be honest but I did think that Douglas Smith was actually pretty good as the protagonist of Nicholas, someone that isn't really a fan of Christmas. He's a huge downer about it, and they do explore as to why that he's not a fan of Christmas. So I thought he was actually really good. Uh, what did you think about that actor? Mm, I think he did the, like really good. I think he was doing the best that he could and giving like, everything he could for this part. I also did really like, I guess you could say, the love interest in the film. She's played by Emily Day Raven, um, and I actually really liked her. She was... A nice little love interest. I thought she served well, pretty much supporting the protagonist, making choices, the smarter choices, because even kind of poke fun of it, how she's making the choices, the better ones, more than him. Yeah. And I kind of like how they played on the film. Yeah. <laughs> but what did you think about the love interest? I really like love the love interest because you know, coming to like if you see the point of the guy, he has like he's interest into like. Similar, similar things I am like into Transformers, anime, etc., etc. She makes it more interesting as it is. Oh yeah. And for her personality and all the stuff she does, it makes makes me like like it, like you can say love her, like the way like the personality of this character. And then another character I actually really liked, and I don't know the actor's name. I'll put I'll put it right here on the screen, but. Yes. Uh, uh, he plays the grandpa of Nicholas, and I actually thought he was also a pretty fun character. Um, he's the one that kind of knows about the whole story of the demon Santa. And something I will say is that there was a scene, and you probably know what it is, but Nicholas was reading through this book, and they actually have this animation scene yeah. that describes the story. And I actually really like that animated scene. Maybe it's because I'm a sucker for animation in general, but I just liked how that whole animation scene was uh, executed. Yeah. And I like the way they did that and all that. It was from, like dead on straight when the kid was actually... The kid was reading the, like the book and explaining it in the, uh, an English version, or the, in the English, English way. Yeah. And the grandpa, what did you think of that character? He, uh, I agree, like, I don't know his name, but I think he played it perfectly as 
as a grandpa. And this film, yeah, it's definitely R-rated for a reason. It is violent, but it's so over the top. There's so many over the top moments in this film that do make it fun to watch. The opening scene, that completely set the tone of the movie, huh? The opening scene had Fran Drescher. It kind of reminded me of Scream, where the first Scream, you know, the opening scene had Drew Barrymore, and then after that, you're introduced to, like, the rest of the new characters. It kind of reminded me of that. From that moment on, yeah, we knew that we were in for a pretty ridiculous ride, and the rest of the film, yeah, it's pretty dang ridiculous. <laughs> There's even a freaking buffalo, but for some reason, the characters keep coming calling this buffalo a reindeer. Yeah, they keep, every, during the whole movie, they call it a reindeer, but specifically in the book, you look closely where you see Satan, uh, Santa Claus, with his buffalo, and it actually says that they're buffalo. Yeah, and like... They, they've been calling it deer. Oh, look, there's a deer flying with, with Santa Claus. And, and you see clearly in the sky, it's a buffalo. And then when me and you were watching the movie together, we're all like, no, it's a freaking buffalo. Get your facts straight. <laughs> I guess deers are buffaloes and buffaloes are deers now. I guess so. As far as direction, I will say for a very over-the-top movie like this, I thought it was very well directed. I mean, the writing itself, it's not exactly the best. There's some... There, uh, well, there's a lot. There's actually a lot of very poorly written dialogue. <laughs> I think there were some parts they should have fixed it up a little, but I think overall from out of the other, other parts, that was good. Then the cinematography for the film was pretty good as well, and there were even some very interesting music that was playing throughout the film that kind of did fit the tone of it. Yeah. The story is like nothing, anything too special. You kind of watch it for the over-the-top scenes. It's just kind of one of those movies, but there are some very over-the-top scenes like that scene at the strip club. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that strip club scene was so over-the-top. I, I, I mean, told you before we start watching that, I told you, I have a bad feeling that there's going to be more, a little bit more of sexuality into it. And then I did think that the climax was very good. Yes, it's still, it's still stupid and all that. <laughs> And you're just kind of going, um, you can't help but go, man, this movie's so stupid, but at the same time, you can't help but kind of have fun where, when, where, where the climax was going. Yeah. Well, I know it's weird to say this, uh, because we basically have been saying technically flaws with, like, the dialogue not being all that great and all that. But I guess if we were to count maybe actual flaws, maybe, like, towards the end, before we did get to the climax, maybe the movie got a little bit dull, uh, because... I, I honestly didn't have a problem with the movie for like the first 50 minutes. I actually thought it was a very fast movie movie. And this movie's short too. It's only like, what, an hour and 20 minutes? Something like that? An hour and uh, 30. Yeah, but like, well, it's not like a, it's not like an hour and 30. It's like an hour and 20 minutes. Because it ended around that mark. Yeah. Is it yeah. an hour and 25? Because like, including the credits? Yeah, well, including the credits is an hour and 24. Because it's an hour and 24. But without the credits, it was like an hour and 18 minutes. There you go. Yeah, I would say like maybe towards the end, uh, the climax got a little bit dull. It was never dragging that much for me to be honest. Like even when it was a little bit slow for like a good maybe two or three minutes, it eventually picks back up and you get to more of the silly demon Santa stuff. Yeah, uh, it was a little bit, a little bit dull. Some of the parts like Tony had taken out of my, I was even thinking of some of the animation like they sh probably had to work on it a little bit. You mean the special effects? Yeah, the special effects. Oh yeah, so I forgot to say, the special effects aren't exactly the best either. They're not the best, but at least they improvise what they have for the limited of it. Yeah, yeah. it's not It's not like the worst special effects I've seen, but it's all like, yeah, they could have been better. Yeah. But I did like the animation like when, they, when the kid was reading the book. I really enjoyed that. That was like, right, like perfectly, like perfect. I'll give that like a 10 out of 10. Yeah. But like the special effects, so they should have just tweaked it, like try the best they could, but I think they tried, but at least they tried to do the what they couldn't have. Now, unless they made it intentionally not look that great, then that's probably understandable. Yeah, if they put it like that, then it's understandable. So overall, you guys, bad, s no, bad Santa. <laughs> That's also R-rated, but that's not the kind of Santa we're talking about. So overall, you guys, Santa Slay, it's not a good film. It's kind of a guilty pleasure film for me, to be honest. Like, you don't really go there for the story. The story's like, whatever, to be honest. The visual effects, eh, that could have been better. The dialogue, it, there's a lot of pretty bad dialogue, but... I think that does add, honestly, to the fun factor of the film. It's just something entertaining just for you for the holidays. For yeah. Christmas holidays. 
Yeah. Oh, uh, it's really entertaining. They did. It's really enjoyable for like. During the Christmas month, all the actors are really good, even the relationship-wise. It's a fun movie to watch from the Christmas season. I'm gonna give Santa Slay two and a half out of four stars. This is not your family film, but yeah, it's something different. It's Demon Santa, so yeah, go crazy if you want Demon to. Demon Santa or Saint and Santa, however we want to say it. <laughs> True. So what would you rate this, Mr. J? I'll rate this a three out of five. Nice. So you guys, that is our review for Santa Slay. Uh, thank you, Mr. J, for joining me in this Christmas review for Santa Slay. No problem. And you guys, let me know in the comments down below what you think about Santa Slay. Thank you so much for watching. This is 22 Tiger Dude here with Mr. J. Hello. And don't forget that the both of us will have... The holiday spirit. Yes. And ho, 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 ah, ho. No, I got it off. Get... Tiger power. Ah. <laughs> Yours is too heavy. <laughs> and too furry. You. And too I'm furry. Being you. I'm being you. Ho, Yours ho, is too soft and furry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a different way to end a video.